She should be here by now. Bien. So let's get started. Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton. Monsieur Eaton, I'm talking to you. I'm sorry, Monsieur le Président, I, I was thinking. Do you understand the indictment? Sorry, but I have to ask the prosecutor to repeat. Monsieur Eaton, do you consider it to be a joke? You're charged with a serious crime. Please stay focused. Monsieur Prosecutor, please continue. As I said, I accuse Alfred Eaton of murdering Marie Capet on the 17th of October 1894 in Paris. That day, Alfred Eaton was at the theatrical premiere of Prométhée, Vol du Feu, which took place at Opéra Garnier. As it is apparent from the testimony of witnesses, the accused left at about 8.30 p.m., before the end of the banquet. At about 9.25 p.m., he rented a room in his name at the Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room uh, that approximately at 11.16 p.m. Marie Capet was murdered. Next, uh, the accused returned to his house, and at about 10.05 p.m. he entered his apartment in the company of Marie Capet, or let her in. It results from the fingerprint analysis, it did not show the victim's fingerprints on the outer side of the door, only on the inner. Alfred Eaton, by means of deception or threats, led the victim to his secret workshop, which is located on the first floor of his apartment. The police report did not indicate any signs of struggle or resistance. The accused probably wanted to test on Marie Capet the prototype of a torture machine of his construction, which was in the room along with medical tools and manuals of torture. When Marie Capet realized what the accused intended to do, she grabbed a metal rod lying in the room and hit the accused on the head which caused a real threat to his life and, according to doctors, may have caused unconsciousness. The fingerprints of Marie Capet's left hand were found on the rod, as well as Alfred Eaton's traces of blood. Traces of blood were also found on the floor of that room. At the time of his arrest, the accused had an extensive wound on his head, 
as confirmed by medical examination. Seizing the opportunity, Mary Cappy fled from the apartment. She was stressed and in a hurry. This was confirmed by her numerous fingerprints secured on the inside of the door of the apartment of the accused. Then, Marie Capé ran into a nearby hotel, the Caucasus. It was the same hotel in which the accused rented a room. As it appears from the testimony of the clerk, Marie Capé was extremely stressed, repeating the word doctor and police. Probably she wanted to call for help. When the clerk went to get some water to calm Marie Capet, she disappeared. The next day, on the 18th of October, about 8.32 a.m., a maid found her body in a room rented by Alfred Eaton. It was covered with numerous fingerprints of the victim and of the accused and had traces of the victim's blood. The immediate cause of death was a severe blow to the abdomen in the liver area with a blade of about 14 centimetres length. The murder weapon constructed by the accused was secured in his apartment. Marie Capet's unwashed blood stains were still present on it as well as the fingerprints of the accused. The accused is also charged by the testimony of one of the neighbours who passed the accused at the front door of the building in which they both lived at about 11.30pm. The witness testified that the clothing of the accused was stained with blood. Unfortunately, the said clothes were not found. At the time of committing the alleged crime, the accused was sane, which means he acted consciously. For committed crimes, the accused shall be liable to life imprisonment or the death penalty. Has the accused finally understood the indictment? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused plead guilty? To the charges against him? No, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused want to provide explanations? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Monsieur le Président, could I ask you for some conversation time with my client? Of course. I just wish it would not take too much time. We've already wasted too much of it. Monsieur Eaton, please note that you can look through evidence at any moment. It is available by pressing tab. I will show the defence evidence to the court at the time of your uncovering during the testimony. It might surprise the prosecutor. If necessary, you can recall the string of events, according to the prosecution, by pressing the Q key. Will you need my help during testimony? I will give you my advice and remind you of important facts and events. We are ready, uh, Monsieur le Président. Then let's get started. Monsieur Eaton, what were you doing on October 17th, 1894, from 8 to 12 p.m.? There was a theatrical premiere of Prométhée that day, which was sponsored by Le Feu, in which I am the lead designer. Starting at 7 p.m., I was at the premiere at the Opéra Garnier, Around 8.30 p.m. after the play, I found that I did not want to attend the dull banquet, and instead I preferred to work. I said goodbye to Hugo Argent, uh, president of Le Feu, and I drove home. I got there at about 9 p.m. For a moment, I admired the charms of Montmartre. Later, I wanted to stop the car and go for a ride, but it ran out of fuel. I decided to go for an evening walk. I opened the gate. 
I entered the nearby hotel, Caucasus. I threw a coin into the fountain of the hotel lobby. Then I opened the elevator grate. I took the elevator to the first floor. Then I opened the elevator grate. I opened the elevator grate. I took the elevator to the second floor. I opened the elevator grate. I examined the historic tableware. For a moment, I admired the paintings of Paris. I opened, I opened the inner door. I tried the door handle to the hotel room, but it was closed. Why did you try to open the door to someone else's room? Honestly, I do not know, Monsieur le Président. I guess I was just curious if it would be opened. Well, please continue your testimony. I tried to open the door to the hotel room, but it was closed. Why did you try to open the door to someone else's room? Honestly, I do not know, Monsieur le Président. Well, please... I tried the door handle to the hotel... Honestly, I do not know. Well, I tried to... Why did you... Honestly, I do not... Well. Then, I opened the elevator grate. Later, I took the elevator to the ground floor. Then, I opened the elevator grate. I wanted to rent a room in a hotel, but the clerk said that a room had already been rented in my name. He said it's on the top floor and gave me a spare key. I must add that the conversation with this man was not held at about 9.25 p.m., uh, as according to his testimony, but at a different time. Monsieur Eaton, do you claim that you did not rent that room? Oui, Monsieur le Président, but I knew it could not be a coincidence. The name Ethan is not that common. So you tried to learn more from the clerk? Yes, however, he hid behind his professional secrecy. I knew he wouldn't tell me a thing. I do not understand one more thing. You live next to the hotel, so why did you want to rent a room there? Sometimes I meet up with some girls of the Moulin Rouge, and due to my reputation, I prefer not to do it in my apartment. Did you meet Marie Capet face to face? No, Monsieur le Président, never. I understand. Please continue. I tried to open the door to the rest. I opened, I opened the door to the phone room. Then I bought something from the vending machine. I opened the door and walked out into the street. Then, then, I opened the gate. I do not recall that part. For a moment, I admired the charms of Mont
I entered the Café de Paris cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no... Did you report this fact to police officers? No, Monsieur le Président. I decided that it was not worth losing my time. And why is that? A second of my work is more important than the lifetime of each and every one of those plebeians. Besides, if I had reported it, I would have done them a favor. What do you mean, Monsieur Eaton? In jail, they would have had better living conditions than those holes that they call houses. I understand. Please return to your testimony.